Here is my cat, Albert. Albert is a cat with many friends. His three best friends are Oscar, Max, and Emily. The other day, Oscar suggested a game. A coin has to be tossed till it lands on heads, with a maximum of three tosses. In the case of a favorable outcome, Oscar promises to give away some of his chips. Otherwise, the player having tossed the coin must give some chips to Oscar. The rules of the game are as follows. If the cat tossing the coin ends up with heads after the first toss, the game stops and he receives two of Oscar's chips. Should he end up with tails and then heads, Oscar will give him one chip. But in case of two tails and then a head, it is he who must give one chip to Oscar. Even worse, if the player ends up with tails three times in a row, then he must give no less than 10 chips to Oscar. Albert does not want to lose his chips. He wonders what are the odds to fall in one of the last two cases. The probability of a coin to land on tails being one and two, he calculates with Max and Emily that the probability of three tails in a row is the cube of one and two, thus one and eight. Using the same reasoning, Albert concludes that the probability of two tails and then heads is one and eight as well. Overall, the probability of losing Oscar's games is therefore one and eight plus one and eight, that is one and four only. Phew, Albert feels better. He decides to start playing. He ends up with a heads and a tails. Oscar, as promised, gives him one of his chips. Meanwhile, Max ends up with a heads after one toss. He therefore receives two chips from the stack of Oscar. Finally, it's Emily's turn. She gets the same outcome as Albert and therefore receives one chip. Albert, Max, and Emily now feel sorry for Oscar. As expected, he lost. Yet to their surprise, Oscar offers a second round. Has Oscar lost his mind? Do you wish to make money through games of chance? Don't go to the casino, just open one. But what is the secret to this kind of business? Albert, Max, and Emily are convinced that the only balance between probability of winning and probability of losing matters. But Oscar is ahead of them. He knows things are not that simple. What is the proper way to approach this problem then? How can one tell if a game of chance is interesting for the player? Before we go further, we need to introduce an important concept of statistics, expected value. Expected value, sometimes called average, is calculated for a random variable. Do you remember the random variable we found in the attic, Albert? I've got the blueprint back. The domain of this random variable was actually made of four elements, minus four, zero, one, and two. The related weights were 0 0.005, 0 0.535, 0 0.14, and 0 0.32. Let's calculate the expected value. We need to multiply each value of the domain by its weight and then add the amounts together, getting the value of 0 0.76. So what? Patience, Albert. We're getting there. Let's recall how a random variable works. A random variable is a bit like a box. Every time you open it, a number comes out. Statisticians then say that one observation of the variable has been made. Problem. It is impossible to say in advance what value will actually come out. We know it's going to be a value from the domain, but we never know which one. For long, statisticians thought that there was nothing to add to the subject. And then, Jacob Bernoulli made an extraordinary discovery. Even though no single observation from a random variable can be predicted, the sum of a large number of observations can, and the accuracy of this prediction increases with the number of observations made. Would you like an example, Albert? Here are the 100 observations of the variable from the attic that you made a few months ago. Even though these observations are each random, there is something one can predict. Their sum should be close to 76. And indeed, if we try, the sum is 80. We missed the predicted target by only four units. Why 76? Because the expected value of the random variable is 0.76. The value of 0.76 is the value that, conceptually, comes out of the box each time someone opens it. Opening it up 100 times means ending up with a value of 0.76 100 times, thus with 76. Let's push this reasoning further. What can we say when the box is opened 1,000 times? The sum of 1,000 observations should be close to 760. Even better, because we now work with 1,000 observations, we can say that the sum of these 1,000 observations should be closer to 760 than 80 was to 76 in the previous case. Jacob Bernoulli thus discovered that, even though successive observations from a random variable are unpredictable, the sum of a large number of these observations is quite predictable and is related to the random variable's expected value. Even today, this is considered to be one of the greatest statistical discoveries ever made. It is, however, Mr. Poisson who gave the name in use today for this phenomenon, the Law of Large Numbers. Thanks to the law of large numbers, we can hack the secret behind any game of chance. Let's try with Oscar's game. What is the expected value? The game of Oscar can be viewed as a random variable with a domain of 2, 1, minus 1, and minus 10 in chips. The related weights are 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and 1 eighth. Let's calculate the expected value. Each value of the domain is multiplied by its weight before the sum of everything is computed. The result, minus 0 0.125 chip. That is minus 1 eighth. Oscar, the expected value of your game is lower than zero. 
Things are quite clear. Each time a cat plays at Oscar's game, it is as if one eighth of a chip is lost by that cat. If Oscar manages to make his friends play a large number of times, the law of large numbers ensures him to win. After 80 tosses, he should have 10 extra chips. After 800 tosses, this becomes 100 extra chips. Hmm. Albert does not want a second turn at Oscar's game. However, he has something else in mind. A new game of chance, this time based on the roll of dice. The player rolls two dice, and if the sum of the two values is an even number, then this is the number of extra chips the player gets. For instance, if two and four are the numbers, the player gets six chips. If the numbers are three and five, the player gets eight chips. In the best case, the player gets 12 chips when the rolled dice each shows six pips. However, in case the sum of the two values is an odd number, the player loses seven of his chips. These are Albert's rules. Dear viewer, what do you think about Albert's game? Would you play it? Leave us your answer in the comments section of this video, on Twitter or on Facebook. Do you wish to see Albert in other adventures? Check out his other videos and do not forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel. See you soon.